I am the new head principal, so pre-K through fifth grade of Atchison Elementary. I'm the new head principal, I'm so pre-K through fifth grade of Atchison Elementary. I'm Andrea Cosmogera. I'm the primary associate principal, and I'm pre-K through fifth grade. I'm Andrew Lilly. I'm the intermediate associate principal, and I'm pre-K through fifth grade. The organization of the leadership at Atchison Elementary. We had two head principals and one assistant principal. And this year, we flipped it to one head, two um, assistant associates, sorry. So that goes with the whole theme culture of our building this year, where we're one team, one vision, one goal. Before, it was two separate sides. You were the primary, you were the intermediate, and they missed that connection point. So this year, we have really hit hard that we are one building. So you are our students from kindergarten to fifth grade. It's no longer three, four, five in the primary. So... The culture of the building is one cohesive unit this year. The teachers feel that there's one point person, they have that one communication, and it's not so much this side against that side anymore. We're just one building, one massive building, but we're one team, one vision, one goal. Okay, so I'm gonna speak briefly about the percentage of students, as you're all aware, right? uh, we started offering three different ways to educate children. Um, across the district, at, element, at the elementary school, we have 82% of our students that are on site. Uh, 17 chose to go full remote, and about 1% are hybrid. And we made this late last week, and even today, we had an increase in our on site. Some of our families are realizing what it takes to educate their children at home, and they've been calling and uh, asking to come back. So we'll gladly take <laughs> So something else that we knew would be a uh, focus for us this school year is our social emotional learning or character development. Um, not only was it a large part of the navigating change document, which was very important, but it's always been, we've always had um, character development standards. We knew that our students were going to need this now more than ever, having six months off at home in probably less structured environments and not around peers for socialization. So we built in 10 minutes every morning after the announcements that teachers do. And our second grade calls it a bite-sized lesson. I love that. Um, they do this little SEC lesson in the morning. Along with that, um, we have had to restructure our amazing social worker and counselor, um, Tara and Mary. They can no longer pull um, social groups like they used to be able to because then we're pulling from different cohorts. They still pull one-on-ones and they still have their caseload for that, but we have asked them to push into classrooms. And so this is an example of them at the front of the room. Um, they go in for one 30-minute lesson a month, so in a four-week time span, they have seen every single student in the building, and 
and they have a lesson that they do with them. They have based their um, lessons on our Second Steps program that Mr. Downing teaches in his character ed. So they work very closely together um, so that we have consistency there, that we're using the same verbiage and vocab and all the, the students are hearing it everywhere in the building. They also are using Mr. Downing's um, online classroom. That's where they post their lessons for our remote learners. Um, we have seen really great positive things with our focus on SECD, um, we've seen a decrease in behavior referrals, which you'll see some numbers in a minute. But just the positive connections that we see between our students and teachers and teachers and students, we're really seeing that and feeling that in the building. So this year, we focused on kind of a, this point last year for September, October compared to this year. Because we know the end of the school year was not a norm. We wanted to continue with learning so there was a lot of data that was not collected. We were not able to do our final diagnostics or a final testing. So this year we focused on, this is where AES started last year at this time, and this is where we are now. So last year for behavior pool, we saw 129 kids. This year we're down to 34. Now, that is a big transition, not only because of the social emotional, but the cohorts have a lot to do with that. You don't have the whole grade level at recess, you don't have them switching and stuff. They are really able to build those relationships in those classrooms. Those minor referrals of, oh, they don't have a pencil, oh, they're not working, we're not seeing them anymore. The time that we gave the teachers at the beginning of the school year, the time they took when we started this year has shown in that relationship building, teachers have more grace. They have that time to spend, time to talk, have those side conversations. So. Not only as the social emotional piece, but us staying in cohorts, we might have to continue that. <laughs> it has been an amazing thing. I'm, recess alone has been more productive, purposeful play than we have seen in a really long time because they are able to build with their 15 to 20 people in their classrooms compared to 123. So, continuing on. So, so I'm ready is our universal diagnostic for K-5. So you will see here on the right hand side where AES started at the fall of 2019. We had tier one for 29% at tier one, tier two was at 47%, tier three was at 24%. So tier one at grade level, tier two means I'm one grade level behind, tier three means I'm two or more grade levels behind. When we took the diagnostics, when we came back, I was very surprised that it looked not much different than where AES started last year. Now, we expected to see a fall because we did not get all our standards covered by any means. Our teachers did the best. They were amazing. We did see an increase in that Tier 3. So this year, we have a very strong focus on our Tier 1 education, the fidelity of our programs, we are doing walkthroughs every day to give that at real feedback of, are we at that rigor we need to be? Are we focusing on DOK level one and two? Nope, we need to get them to three and four. The nice part about all our teachers being remote learners is they're taking that time to take a standard at DOK one, and by Friday, we're at DOK four. So you're seeing that progression. And I, when winter comes around, we're doing that already, I'm gonna see big, huge cheer. We're gonna see big jumps. So, math is the same way, but the thing works. Thank you, thank you, people. <laughs> okay, woo, math. So, same thing. Tier one, equal at 11%. Tier two, we went from 66 to 54. Tier three, 22 to 35. Again, September to September. We knew we were going to lose game, but in reality, we're not starting much different than what we did when we were in a full school year. So that is our mission this year. We have to get our tier one instruction up to where we can stay in the games that we make throughout the year. We are in the third year of the late grant. It was focused on three, four, five. There were components that go with birth to five, so that would be preschool and kindergarten, and first grade felt that love. So the primary side 
focus on the language development, the formation of sounds, how the words, the vocabulary. Because it's very important for our younger learners to be immersed in immense vocabulary. We learned this summer that three, four, five actually needs to learn more words a day than a kindergarten student. And that opened our eyes because we're like, oh wait, kindergarten will teach five words a day, where a three, four, five might do a word a week. So we flipped that on to that extreme vocab thing, introducing more words, having text-rich reading material. So you have heard before about year one, year two. We are now in year three. So this is where we need to sustain what the link grant gave us. So that's that balanced literacy, literacy. It is a big chunk that our teachers have bit off in the last three years. But going into their classrooms, this really can be an attest to that. This is new to him. Very new. <laughs> but he is seeing the progression. He's seeing the learning. He's seeing the vocabulary. So we are working on the part that's being introduced this year is the writing um, part of the block. We're still getting on that one. So. The clicky thing doesn't work for me. Did you click it already? Yeah, I tried to. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So there's some great things going on. We just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of what's going on. We'll look at a couple of clips here. Um, this is a sample from our remote class in first grade. This is show you a little clip. So this is a phonics lesson that she was able to do remotely, and they had to give examples of each sound. Thank <laughs> you. 
redesigning education as we know it. And we all know it was very stressful. It was like, oh, how are we going to do it? But AES has that staff. We have that culture. We have that vision that we were able to take any challenge set forth and make it happen. So as you can see, 
amazing things are happening at AES. We're going to continue it. And thank you for your time. Any questions? And thank you for your time. Any questions? I have one. Yes. Um, the number of uh, hybrid learners. At one time, it was quite a bit larger oh, yeah. than what it mm -hmm. is now. Is it so parents decided? It just wasn't working. Yeah, so a lot. So, for example, one from hybrid to on site now, mom was very worried about if it's too big to wear a mask. And she goes, Oh, that's the problem. Um, mom was worried about cases, the fact that we had so many protocols in place that ensured sanitation, masks, physical distancing. Our cases have been very limited. So, mom was like, I just don't have the time to give her. That you can give her. A lot of parents are worried about the social aspect that the child is missing out of. So, at any time when a parent says that, I'm like, no, we will take your cases back and open arms, of course we will. So, we have seen a lot of hybrid come straight to on site because of the demands of coming in and out. What about those that are totally off? Um, have you seen many of those? They're trickling back in now. Um, that's like I totally said. Parents are like, oh my gosh. We never do for 365 minutes for remet. They are seeing the amount of work. So the remet is what we want the equity piece. So what you are receiving at home is the same expectations that are happening in the classroom. And parents are like, I'm not a teacher. I didn't go to school for this. And so they are reaching out and we're taking them back. And a lot of their apprehension was the safety of their babies. And of course, a lot of their babies to play safe. And so Reports going out seeing that we are sustaining, we're not closing, our numbers are very, very low. Parents are way more comfortable with their kids coming home. Well, I just want to say I'm impressed with the reduction of the referrals and things like that. And it wasn't necessarily the students doing, I mean, I see the piece, it was maybe the system that we were using. More so than children just acting up and not doing what they're doing. So that's encouraging that we kind of. It varies. Yes, it is. It's that 10 to 15 minutes every morning that the teachers are spending. Students are understanding and seeing redirect. There's not so much pop up and push out. It's like we copy up the pop part. Let's talk about your social emotional feelings. What is going on? How can we de escalate? So, a lot of learning on the child side, also with the teacher. There, it's that relationship. I can't say more. My big word is here. So, keep up the good work, you guys. Our reports is the enrollment review, and I'll just let Renee share with us. Uh, yeah, so this is a, the most promising report. It's a, it's a little uh, distressing. Our enrollment count is quite down. I will say the shadows actually really much mirrors what's happening across the state as a result of COVID. Uh, many families are choosing to complete virtual online learning through a virtual school versus around remote learning. And I really wish every parent wants what they just reported tonight because I think they would just click that in a heartbeat and, and take the opportunity to, to be uh, taught like our elementary is doing. But our head count, um, which includes like every every um, people that we get from some of the private schools throughout the day is down 112 students and our FTD is down 101 now a couple of things this has been a discussion of many a kansas state department of education meeting as you know our funding is directly related to our fte and so 100 students is just a a huge gap uh, a couple of things to note is that a two-year uh, you look at a two-year cycle of enrollment and you always get your highest year so last year's fte was help to turn our funding source. With that said, we need to recoup what we've lost. However, the state is looking at a couple of options. There's been discussion of a second count date this year. Um, 
my hesitation with that is if they wait till the spring, um, that's when we do we do just see a drop anyway, typically. And I would anticipate they would take an average of the two counts, and so that wouldn't do us a lot of good. Then there's also been talk of eliminating this year altogether um, as part of the process. I know in, in talking with area superintendents, um, some of our neighboring districts that are our size are down way more than 100. So uh, it's, it's everywhere. And so they are looking at maybe dropping a year's worth of the count. And there, there's also potential of instead of looking at a three year thing or a two year um, time span, moving that to a three year time span. So you could look at the year before and the year after. So just um, this is, like I said, not the most exciting news report after their wonderful elementary report. Um, the chart in there gives specific grade levels and numbers. Um, and I would tell you, kudos to our schools because they literally went door to door trying to find kids. We had a lot of kids who moved away. And you look at the state of the economy and, and what's happening, and people moved to live with family members elsewhere for sustainability, to find employment. Um, there were a lot, of, a lot of reasons. We truly lost a lot of families physically moving away. Um, but we also lost several families to either a homeschool or a virtual school. So, any questions about that? Um, will it be the, um, the virtual school versus the homeschool? So do they have to unenroll and then? Correct. They have to transfer to a virtual school or well accredited. Mm -hmm. If it's not an accredited school, they have to unenroll and enroll as a home school student. And then they can choose by a couple families who have done that. They enroll in a, a virtual school in Florida, but it's not accredited, so they have to count themselves as a home school student. But our virtual students, as a choice, they're still like, okay. they're still like, yeah, yeah. 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 we just yeah. don't identify as a virtual school. Yeah. We offer remote learning, and some of our some of our um, courses are done through an Odyssey or a virtual program. But the majority of our remote learning so next, let's review our bad weather procedures. Our procedures are outlined in some of the notes you have, but just so you know off the top of your head, um, typically when I'm looking at weather, I'm looking at a lot of different things. I'm looking at um, what the forecast says, of course, what the temperatures have been over the last few days. Um, we look at uh, transportation and, and what tri uh, tribulations and trials they may have. Uh, in the past, and I'm sure it will be this way again, I'll take the probably, well, I did, I'll probably take the north and east or west roads, and then the transportation director will take either the south or the west or east roads, and we'll drive those early, early in the morning. Um, last year, we did our first early dismissal that we had done in years, and it actually worked and was necessary, so that could happen again. Um, we try to cancel school as often as possible the night before, but as you know, sometimes forecasts aren't, aren't totally accurate, so if it's not doing anything the night before, I'm pretty hesitant to call that. Um, and then I notify all the local stations and, and such as well send out the schedule. So um, it's quite a process, actually. It's very stressful. Mm -hmm. And last year, I'll just tell you a quick story. My first snow day, I was at the Chiefs game, and it is snowing to beat the band at the Chiefs game, and the transportation director's calling me, principals are calling me, and I said, I'm not in Atchison, and I'm not going to make that decision until I get there, because what if I blow it? This is my first snow day. I'm not going to blow it. And I pulled into my street and turned into my driveway and slid back down my driveway, and I called the transportation director and said, no school. <laughs> so now I'm taking their word for it. Um, we have three snow days built in to this school year. And um, if we have any kind of bad weather, 
you so much, passes unanimously. Next on our um, action items is to approve the IPS RSVP hours programming for Central School AHS and AMS. Do you remember last meeting they talked to us about this? Um, did you want to say anything else about it? No, I didn't get any feedback from the board, but if you can repeat Paul that uh, RSVP hours would be done at the classroom effort, and then students would have an option to do additional RSVP hours to receive the same presentation, kind of acknowledging that. Um, I think this is a great move. Uh, it teaches kids really what volunteering and is in terms of just expecting it and not what they bring. I know there will be some um, modifications with COVID, but I do recommend this change. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, may I have a motion to approve that? I make a motion that we approve the IPS or SVP hours for Central School and High School. Any further discussion needed on that? I think um, at the end, that was really clear. Anybody have? Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Passes unanimously. Uh, items for uh, consideration is policy review. Again, I think these are. Yep, all these are reaffirms. I just want to note that in the era of COVID, our navigating change document does do some modifications to some of these policies. For example, lifetime courtesy tickets, for example, that the home front that says we can only have two guests for athletes, and that negates it. But otherwise, we are recommending all these policies go into effect just with any modifications necessary as per COVID. Again, this is a first read. They're all reaffirms, and we'll read it on the board. Moving right along. We don't need a motion for that because it's just everybody's going to take a look and read through those. So, next, um, we're going to go into executive session, and Diane's going to read tonight for us. And Madam President, I move that the board recess into an executive session to discuss the following subjects employee employment performances, employment recommendations. The justification for this executive session is to discuss personnel matters of non-elected personnel pursuant to the non-elected personnel section under KOMA. The open meeting will resume in the VAP community room in 15 minutes. Let's make that be um, 755. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. All right, let's go into this executive session. It passes me in. I would like to discuss the uh, early graduation request. In my eyes, all four of them are very validated, very worthwhile. But if you have any discussion, Renee, on Oh, there is five. I said four. I'm right. sorry. Five. Um, I suppose, you know, to me, this goes right along with our individual plan to study. The students have stated their particular goals. They have reasons uh, that seem very, I think, rational, well thought out. Their ideas are well thought out as well. Um, I, I really am in support of, of all of these requests. Any discussion on any? Okay. For some of those, I felt like it's almost a compliment to us. It is. That we had prepared them for something to go on to, especially I think there were two, maybe three that were going to be near term. There, they could one be was going to be a nurse, now going to be a teacher. Yeah. So, that's why. so uh, I think that's a credit to uh, yeah, our job. We prepared them for the for the next steps. So can we just lump them together and say, okay, um, I'd entertain a motion for us to approve all five of the. Right? Make motion that we accept the early graduation request. Second, Randy, thank you. Um, any 
discussion? Kind of already. Uh, if so, no, I don't see any discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Passes unanimously. Congratulations to each one of those, and best wishes, and uh, you'll be well in life, I'm sure. I will note that Mrs. Warren is going to talk to each of those five because our semester ends later than typical. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to know that. We want them to be aware that that won't be at Christmas. It will be mid-January this year. Okay, just for the record. <laughs> right. Thank you, Ms. Warren, for that. So, uh, next is our personnel action tonight. Do you want to copy that on your desk? I move that we accept the following resignations. Elliot Smith, spelling bee sponsor at AES, effective at the end of the 1920 school year. Karen Glennon, Interventionist Team Department Head at ADS, effective September 21st, 2020. Brittany Hess, Related Services, effective at the end of the 2021 school year. Jamie Johnson, Related Services, effective at the end of the 2021 school year. Thank you, Sean. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Now for recommendations for employment. We have just one uh, recommendation for employment. Dana Moody, paraeducator, Evans Elementary School, effective October 1st, 2020. Um, any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. It also passes unanimously. Next is supplemental. We have three supplementals to approve. Misty Wilson, interventionist, team department head at ADS. Jamie Tate, assistant volleyball coach, AMS. Rachel Crosswhite, spelling bee sponsor at AES. Any discussion on those? Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Passes unanimously. Now, without further ado, unless you have anything else to talk about, <laughs> let's adjourn. <laughs> I need to be adjourned this week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you again for your